I have two loves in this world. One is musical theatre, as you can probably tell from this channel, and the other is Doctor Who. Like, as a kid, I was just obsessed. I was, I, I was obsessed. Like, musical theatre came into my life a little bit later. My first love was Doctor Who. And this week, hopefully, uh, if I've timed things right and I've been amazing, the day this video comes out is the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. And when I tell you I've been trying to find a way to link my channel all about musical theatre with Doctor Who, I have been trying. <laughs> I really have. I really have been trying for ages to think of an idea. And it just happened that perfect timing, it came to me. It dawned on me. It came on a setting on a sonic screwdriver at the perfect, perfect time for this. Today, I'm going to walk through every single Doctor and what their favourite musical would be. Is this a very silly idea? Yes. Will I have a sonic screwdriver in my hand the entire video? Yes. Because I am very nerdy when it comes to Doctor Who. I am the lamest person in the world when it comes to Doctor Who. The, the obsession for Doctor Who knows no bounds, and I am showing that today. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. Sometimes I will do a weird mixture video like this, but I will do reviews. I do video essays. I do this. And if any of that sounds interesting to you and you want to see the most chaotic theatre person on the internet, please do like this video and subscribe because it really helps me out helps start a channel. But let's go through every single doctor. Should I just double? Should I double it? Double sword it? Wait. <laughs> Right now, there are many, many a Doctor. There are many a Doctor. So I had to kind of limit myself on the Doctors. So, I'm definitely doing 1 through 13. 1 through 13 are there. I threw in John Hurt's War Doctor as well, who comes between, uh, in chronological order, McGann and uh, Eccleston. He's like 8.5, we can call him. Um, here's the ones I'm not doing. Jo Martin's Fused to Doctor, I love her to pieces, but I don't feel like I know enough about her Doctor to really assign her a, a a musical. If I was going to say anything, probably the same one I'm about to give to the War Doctor. They would probably enjoy the same musical. I'm not doing David Tennant twice. <laughs> he gets one. <laughs> he gets one. I know he's 14, but I'm filming this before the 60th anniversary episodes have come out. I don't know how different his Doctor is going to be from the 10th Doctor. And if it is not very different, then it's just the same musical I'm going to give him, isn't it? And I'm not doing Shutigatwa because we haven't seen anything from him either. Even though I am extremely excited to see Shutigatwa as the Doctor, and I think he's going to be absolutely brilliant. But let's start with William Hartnell, the first Doctor. Now, what I've tried to do is I've given them each a musical. Do these all fit? No, I know the modern Doctors a lot more than I know the classic Doctors. So you'll see that I'll start to get a little bit more accurate as we as we get into that side of the video. Hartnell's Doctor to me, the first Doctor is like, he's very caring, but he's like the grumpiest, grumpiest man. He's, he's, he's a bit older and I feel like he'd probably appreciate the classics. You know, I think that if I was going to assign any musical to him, I feel like a Gilbert and Sullivan would be the type of vibe. So I've gone with Pirates of Penzance. Um, and do you want to know the only reason I've given him this one? Is because I can picture the first Doctor, I can picture William Hartnell, kind of, t t you know, controlling the TARDIS, t pulling a couple of levers, and just going, I am the very modern lover, modern major general. I would love to see William Hartnell perform that song. I feel like he would have performed that song brilliantly. Troughton's Doctor... I, I see it. He's a bit bumbling. He's a bit clownish. The one I've landed on for Troughton's Doctor is Annie. I don't know why, <laughs> but I feel like Troughton's like clownish Doctor would probably enjoy something a little bit more optimistic. But if you asked Patrick Troughton's Doctor what his favorite musical was, he would not say Annie. He would he would not say Annie. He would probably like deny it to Kingdom Come. But. We all know. We all know, Troughton, that's your favourite. <laughs> Pertwee's Doctor... Now, I think out of all of the Doctors, John Pertwee's third Doctor is probably the one who would probably enjoy theatre the most. I mean, he's a very, like... He's like a higher class Doctor, you know? He, he enjoys a finer thing. He's quick to anger sometimes because, you know, he's been, like, 
stationed on Earth. He can't fly the TARDIS anymore. He's stuck there and the Doctor hates being stuck in one location at one time. And because this, he's he's like he's like quick to anger, but he's like a very like kind doctor. He enjoys talking about things that he's really interested in. But he's also like a clear hero. He's a clear fighter and a strategist. And I feel like when I was thinking of a musical about a fighter, Zorro the musical came to mind. I feel like I feel like John Pertwee's Doctor would probably really enjoy that. John Pertwee's Doctor would be more of like an opera fan though. Um. I feel like he'd probably enjoy, you know, that, like, the the high, the highest snubbery tier of theatre. But if we're going to go for musical theatre, I think Zorro the Musical is probably up the third Doctor's alley. The next few I really struggled with. Baker, Davidson, and Baker again. These were, like, the, these were the ones I really struggled with. Baker's Doctor, Tom Baker is, like, the person you think of when you think of the Doctor, which is why I'm so mad that I struggled so much with this. I always think of, like, his big smile and his warmth and just, like... He's so, he's so, like, curious as a Doctor, and he's got, like, such a, like, a nice charm to him. Uh, I, I wanted to go with a classic for Tom Baker. I feel like Tom Baker's Doctor would enjoy, and he would vibe with another classic musical, like a Golden Age era musical. So I went for this time with The Music Man. Why? Don't ask me. This one I really struggled with, and I just kind of, like, went, okay, what's a Golden Age musical that I feel like Tom Baker would enjoy? The Music Man. It's it's got that music. It's got the style. It's got a little bit of tap in there somewhere, right? It, yeah, Music Man does. Yes, I'm pretty sure. There's tap in Music Man, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not I'm not delirious right now. No, I'm still a bit sick. <laughs> when I think of Peter Davison's Doctor, I always think of someone who's a bit more youthful and a bit more kind. I feel like kindness was like at the forefront of this incarnation, except when he's talking to Adric, because man, man hated Adric with like a fiery passion. <laughs> but I feel like every Doctor would probably appreciate the musical that I've given to uh, Peter Davison's Doctor, Peter Davison's Fifth Doctor, and that has come from away. A musical all about human kindness and like the beauty of humanity coming together in some of the darkest times is like so... It's like so what the Doctor loves about humanity. Like every time the Doctor is like talking about humans and and people and the joys of that it is everything that come from a in captures but if we want a more specific one cricket the musical which was a a one-off andrew Lloyd webber musical done for like the royals i'm pretty sure <laughs> do i know much about it no but honestly if you look up peter davison's doctor he's all, just always playing cricket he's just always playing cricket man loved cricket and you know what? I feel like he would vibe with Cricket the Musical because of that. Now, Colin Baker, probably the Doctor I know the least about. His, his era is the one I've dived into the least. And because of that, I just struggle with this. But if we're talking about smugness, we're talking about ego a little bit, and we're looking at him and his outfit, there is another musical that comes into mind. It was red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and violet. It's an amazing Technicolor dream coat. Yes. For some reason, Andrew Lloyd Webber gets a lot of representation on this, on this list. But yes, I feel like the sixth Doctor's favorite musical would be Joseph and his amazing Technicolor dream coat. The slightly smug sixth Doctor would adore it, even if Colin Baker absolutely despises this outfit with every fiber of his being. So this McCoy is my favorite out of the classic era Doctors. I feel like just, it's that one scene in, uh, what is it? Is it Remembrance of the Daleks? Where he's talking to Davros and <laughs> Davros is starting to rant. And <laughs> McCoy's doctor is just like, conquer the universe, <laughs> destroy lower races, unlimited rice pudding, <laughs> which is so like doctory and quirky and like fun. I feel like McCoy's doctor is just so eccentric and understands the doctor so well. So I wanted a musical for Sylvester McCoy's doctor, Sylvester McCoy's seventh doctor that was like camp quirky, weird, but also has like an element of darkness to it and darkness to the plot. And I landed on Phantom of the Opera. I feel like Sylvester McCoy's Doctor would probably really enjoy <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. His, his Doctor embodies the classic era a little bit for me. I know that everyone goes to like 
uh, Tom Baker in their minds. But when I think of classic Doctor Who, I think of Sylvester McCoy. I think of Sylvester McCoy and like the question mark uh, sweater and uh, like the long coat and the hat. I, that's what I think of when I think of Class Doctor Who. And when I think of Class Doctor Who, I think a little bit silly and a little bit camp. And Phantom of the Opera is a little bit silly and a little bit camp, but also kind of dark. And that's why I kind of vibe with Phantom a little bit. It's not my favorite, but I vibe with Phantom a little bit because it's just, it's so silly. <laughs> Paul McGann, another Doctor I don't know too much of his tenure with because I haven't seen the TV movie, but what I have seen after that, especially his little short regeneration episode, Night of the Doctor. But this is a Doctor who literally has a library for a TARDIS. So I feel like if anything, he would probably enjoy Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. A, a very serious musical, like very extravagantly staged, based on a very iconic book, War and Peace. If any Doctor is going to vibe with The Great Comet of 1812, I feel like it's Paul McGann's 8th Doctor. Next up, John Hurt's War Doctor. Now, this is the Doctor who I feel like would just have absolutely no time for musical theatre. You know, he's he's struggling through the time war. He's, he's, you know, he's got a lot on his plate. And I don't think he's got much time for musical theatre. And I feel like if he was going to see anything, he would probably more likely go and see a straight play. So if I'm having to give him a musical, I feel like the revival of Oklahoma that recently played in the West End and was uh, on Broadway pre-pandemic would probably be right up his alley. It's dark, it's gritty, it's done so naturalistically that it feels like a straight play. Christopher Eccleston. Christopher Eccleston is kind of the in-between between the modern Doctor's musicals that you're about to see and the war doctor who has the gritty Oklahoma revival. So there was two that I gave him. I first thought of the Vita and then I was like, Ellie, you've put like five, <laughs> you've put like five million <laughs> and Julie Weber musicals on this list. Give the man something different. Because, oh wait, I'm talking about Christopher Eccleston. I should use the sonic screwdriver. Because Christopher Eccleston is probably one of my favorite doctors. Like Eccleston and Tennant, um, two of my favorites. I, I adore them to bits. And I feel like something about Eccleston is that, you know, he has the charm, he has like the, the joy for travel, but behind him and behind all of that is the guilt that he faces because of the tough decision that he had to make. He's got such a burden on his back that I feel like he probably would, he would like to take Rose to something more joyful, but I don't know if he's quite got it in him. He's still got like a remaining darkness about him. And so my second choice in there was something like Les Mis. I feel like Les Mis, like the grandiose nature of Les Mis would probably appeal to Nine a little bit more. But this was another one that was, that was a hard one to place. David Tennant, number 10, Tennant, my favorite doctor, my favorite doctor of all time. The doctor that I started the show with, he will always be my doctor. And I met the man. And I'm still, I, I was so like nervous because that man was my childhood. Like, like I was, I was very young when David Tennant became the doctor. Uh, but like, that was like my in point with it. And like the joy and like the, it's really like when he started to go on adventures with, like Martha and Donna, like those are, those are like my companions. That's my era of Doctor Who. Now we were talking about David Tennant's doctor. I've actually kind of cheated here because I feel like if, if there's any doctor who would like take his companions to see things before he would take them to see something he would like, it's David Tennant's doctor. Like he'll take Rose to Wicked. He'll take Donna to see Mamma Mia. He'll take Martha to see Wicked as well because God, Martha was mistreated. Justice for Martha. <laughs> Martha did nothing wrong, but they, David Tennant's doctor, the temp doctor was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to take you to, to New New Earth because I took Rose here. Man. Man, come on. Man, come on. Get over yourself. <laughs> Justice and Martha. I want Martha back. Martha's such a good character. Martha's probably one of my favorite companions as well. But Donna has my heart. I'm, I'm saying Wicked. I'm saying Wicked for David Tennant. Because I feel like that's probably Rose's favorite. And whatever Rose's favorite is, he's going to go and enjoy. Now, Matt Smith. Matt Smith's Doctor is fantastic. Let's swap screwdrivers. Because this is Matt Smith's one. Kablam. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Matt Smith's Doctor is like so he's probably the most youthful doctor. And he has like the fairy tale nature about himself. I initially wanted to give him a musical that was very fairy tale to match with like the style of his era. Like the whole idea of like like the costuming of um Amy Pond in like the second episode is very like Peter Pan. 
uh, you know, being whisked away to far off worlds while you're still in your nightgown. And like Smith's whole first series is that like fairy tale series. Like the imaginary friend comes to life. The imaginary friend comes and picks you up and comes to life and is there for you. It's so fairy tale. I feel like it's something fairy tale would really suit him, such as a Peter Pan or um, like anything Disney would really work. I feel like you need that clear vibe. Maybe something like Mary Poppins is like a vibe that I feel like would suit the 11th Doctor. But what I also said was that I feel like he needs something a little bit like needlessly silly. He enjoys like that silly kind of comedy and humor and like the youthfulness of it. I feel like if we're not going to give him like Mary Poppins, maybe something like Spamalot would work. Spamalot seems like an obvious choice with like the vibe of uh, the 11th Doctor. Like, just something that does not take itself seriously. But I feel like there is still, like, a darkness behind Eleven. And, like, a confidence that... I feel like I would probably lean more towards giving him something like Mary Poppins. Because Mary Poppins, have you seen the stage version of Mary Poppins? Like, like have you seen the puppet sequence and the tidy away your toy sequence? Jesus Christ, that is creepy. <laughs> Peter Capaldi still uses this sonic screwdriver, so I'm using it. I mean, I, I wish they gave him a sonic screwdriver a little bit earlier, but he still uses Matt Smith's. I'm basing this very much off, like, Series 9. Like, Series series 8, Peter Capaldi is, like, grumpy. He's, like, wondering if he's, like, a good man. He's, like, full into that angst. He's, he's, he's a bit like the midlife crisis doctor. He's, like, wondering about his life, and then suddenly he becomes a rock star, you know? And he's trying to dive back into his youth a bit. Um... And the electric guitar playing anti-capitalist, if you've seen series 10, the episode Oxygen, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Peter Capaldi's Doctor would probably really enjoy like a Rockier musical. And I'm basing this a lot off his portrayal in series 9. Uh, you know, him playing the electric guitar version of the theme song in uh, the uh under the lake two-parter in series nine and coming in on the tank in the opening episodes of series nine i feel like he would like jonathan larson's work a little bit of rent a little bit of tick tick boom and if we're going with the anti-capitalist route a little bit bohemian rent are we are we on the same page here i don't know but that's the vibe <laughs> if we were, if we're going for like series eight Capaldi, I still want to give him like a Rocky musical, so maybe something like Next to Normal would be his vibe. But Capaldi's Doctor is great. Justice for Capaldi's Doctor. I didn't always like love, I didn't love that era, but something that works so well about that era is Capaldi. Capaldi just is the Doctor. And finally for this video, Jodie Whittaker. Now, Jodie Whittaker has a similar energy to like Tennant and Smith in ways. Um, and I'm basing her favorite musical off a very specific moment when she's reacting to the Kablam Man. Like, when the Kablam delivery man comes into the TARDIS and just gives her the parcel and she's just yelling, like, it's the Kablam Man! Like, Whittaker's Doctor has, like, such, like, an excitement to her. She's, like, she loves everything. She has, like, this energy behind her that Whittaker carries, like, really, really well. She's, like, befriending every person that she meets. She has, like, such an innate kindness to her. And I feel like she would love to be wowed. So I felt like the musical that I gave her would have to be something with, like, a big spectacle factor. And I feel like I got it. Lion King. Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, 13, would adore the opening sequence to Lion King. Can you imagine it? She would be as giddy as the kids in that audience. I feel like Jodie Whittaker's Doctor would absolutely adore the Lion King. And honestly, out of all of the choices on this list, the one I stand by the most is this one. This is the perfect choice. There is no, I will take no criticism on this one. The other ones, sure. <laughs> but this one... This one, I feel like I've got a nail on the head. So, that is all my thoughts. I adore Doctor Who. If it hasn't, like, come to the attention, I just adore this show. I feel like it's wonderful, it's whimsical, it's ever-changing itself. And the fact that I can give a different musical to every single Doctor should show you how, like, each actor just makes this role their own. So, was I wrong with any of these? Are there any other musicals that you feel like the Doctor or, like, a specific Doctor would enjoy? As I said, like, uh... 
Comfort Way, I feel like, is a musical that every single doctor would probably enjoy. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out helps that channel. Here's some links to my other videos on screen right now and a link to my Instagram where you can drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.